Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 4th of March. India's coronavirus cases rise to 28, including 16 Italians. US launches first airstrike against Taliban since Doha deal. And devotees celebrate arrival of Festival of Colours in Indian holy town. And now for all the details. India's Health Minister Harshvardhan on Wednesday said that 16 Italians in India have tested positive for coronavirus, taking the total number of cases in the country to 28. He informed that from now on, all passengers arriving on international flights will have to undergo medical screening while entering India. India has reported 28 confirmed cases of coronavirus, including 16 Italian nationals so far, Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan said on Wednesday. These include the three Kerala patients who were discharged after recovery last month. All the remaining 25 cases were reported this week. It includes 17 from Jaipur, 6 in Agra, 1 each in Telangana and capital New Delhi. All the patients who have tested positive for coronavirus are under isolation at various hospitals and facilities across the country. Speaking at a press conference in capital New Delhi, the health minister said the government is working to trace people who may have come in contact with those infected by coronavirus. <laughs> उसके हिसाब से इनका टोटल 28 होता है इस 28 में मैंने आपको ब्रॉड बताया कि तीन लोग केरल में आए थे ठीक हो गए एक दिल्ली में आया वो ट्रैवल करके आया इटली से जो जिसने अपने छह रिश्तेदारों को इन्फेक्ट करा एक इटालियन ग्रुप जो ट्रैवलिंग के लिए भारत में आया था द हेल्थ मिनिस्टर इन्फॉर्म दैट फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन ऑल पैसेंजर्स इंडियन और फॉरेन अराइविंग ऑन इंटरनेशनल फ्लाइट्स will have to undergo medical screening while entering India. The deadly COVID-19 disease that originated in China late last year has claimed more than 3,000 lives and infected more than 90,000 people globally. Baloch activists highlighted human rights violations in Balochistan due to the China-Pakistan economic corridor during an event this week on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva. They said the multi-billion project is being built on blood and corpses of Baloch people. Baloch activists have alleged that the people in Balochistan are paying a heavy price for the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC. Speaking at an event on the implications of CPEC during the ongoing UNHRC session in Geneva, the activists highlighted incidents of enforced disappearances, tortures and killings by Pakistan army that has seen a sharp rise in Balochistan since the launch of the CPEC project. An activist said Pakistan and China have destroyed everything on the route of CPEC, be it human habitation or agricultural land. हम समझते हैं और देख रहे हैं कि वो बलूच के खून से बलूच की लाशों पर गुजर कर बनाई जा रही है सीपेक ने इस सब सूरत हाल में सिचुएशन में इसको इंटेंसिफाई किए द एक्टिविस्ट एक्सप्रेस कंसर्न दैट चाइना विल बी द रियल बेनिफिशियरी ऑफ सीपेक व्हिच रीचेस आउट फ्रॉम शिनजियांग टू बलूचिस्तान्स बॉर्डर पोर्ट देयर इज अ कंसर्न बलूच पीपल आर नॉट हैप्पी they are struggling against the CPEC or any other uh, project which is not being, uh, which is against the will of Baloch people. So this should be clear for the world, especially for the China, that the Baloch people will not allow them. Balochistan is a resource-rich region with huge reserves of minerals and gas, but it remains poor because of the exploitative policies of Islamabad. Moving on to news from Pakistan. 
Locals in Pakistan's Karachi have blamed that rising inflation has continued to make their survival difficult and the government is taking no effective measures to control it. Sharp rise in prices of daily commodities have severely hit domestic budgets of people across the country. The spiraling inflation has continued to be the biggest problem haunting the people of Pakistan, which has severely hit their domestic budgets. Residents in Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, said that sharp rise in prices of daily commodities have made their survival difficult and the government is not doing anything about it. According to a data released by Pakistan Bureau of Statistics or PBS on 28th of February, 13 commodities including LPG cylinder, milk, onion and pulses registered hike in prices in just a week. Locals blame the lack of effective policies to tackle the rising inflation and unemployment in the country for their hardships. The government is saying that we will take action, when the public will die, then we will take action. What will happen? There is a lot of happiness in front of you, there is a lot of happiness, there is a lot of happiness. Inflation at its highest in more than five years has left faith of many Pakistanis shattered who voted for Prime Minister Imran Khan in 2018 over his promise to eradicate poverty and create jobs. In news from Afghanistan, the United States conducted an airstrike on Wednesday against Taliban fighters in Afghanistan, the first such attack since the troop withdrawal agreement was signed between the two sides last week. The United States conducted an airstrike on Wednesday against Taliban fighters in Afghanistan's southern Helmand province, a U.S. Forces spokesman confirmed. Spokesman for the U.S. Forces in Afghanistan, Colonel Sony Legged, in a tweet on Wednesday said the U.S. hit Taliban fighters with the airstrike in response to an insurgent attack on Afghan forces in Helmand. The airstrike was the first by the U.S. against the Taliban in 11 days when a reduction in violence agreement had begun between the sites in the lead up to February 29 pact. This came a day after U.S. President Donald Trump has held a telephonic talk with the Taliban chief negotiator, which Trump said was a very good talk. The pact signed between the U.S. and the Taliban last week hit a quick obstacle after Afghan President Ashraf Ghani refused to implement a clause of the agreement which demanded the release of up to 5,000 Taliban prisoners. The Taliban since then had resumed military operations against the Afghan security forces but as said, would not attack foreign troops. Moving on to news from Nepal, doctors successfully performed a second kidney transplant on Nepali Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on Wednesday. Oli had undergone his first kidney transplant in 2007 Apollo Hospital in Indian capital New Delhi. Doctors successfully completed Nepalese Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's second kidney transplant surgery on Wednesday. Over a four-hour long procedure was done by a team of medical professionals led by Dr. Prem Raj Gyawali, a consultant urologist and kidney transplant surgeon. Samiksha Sangraula of Nepal's Jhapa district had donated one of her kidneys to Oli. Oli was admitted to the Three Bhuvan University Teaching Hospital in capital Kathmandu on Monday evening for his second kidney transplant procedure. Doctors opted for retransplantation after his health report turned out to be normal. The Nepali Prime Minister had undergone his first kidney transplant in 2007 at Apollo Hospital in Indian capital, New Delhi. Sri Lanka's election commission announced a general election for April 25th after President Gota Rajapaksa dissolved parliament on Monday. Residents in capital Colombo welcomed the move to elect a new person as their leader. Residents in Sri Lankan capital Colombo welcomed the dissolution of parliament by President Gota Rajapaksa, paving way for the general election. Gotabaya dissolved parliament on Monday and the election commission announced the general election for April 25th. Rajapaksa, a former defence secretary, won the presidency last November and named his elder brother Mahinda Rajapaksa as interim prime minister. 
The upcoming election could help the Rajapaksa brothers, known for the defeat of separatist Tamil rebels, to strengthen their hold over the island of 22 million people. Andu isu hari peka hari, hari itu hari eka. Api kelal yutui, api api itu dendon ni cang mewa kak. Api mona dekaran ni, api tal kalut kene pat kerangan, darah golam pat kerangan, kene kak api mahajan tar dendon ni kulo bidak. Egalan tol dera dekaran ni, api tol dera egalu dekaran ni. The president is empowered by Sri Lanka's constitution to dissolve parliament any time after completing four and a half years of a five-year term, which Rajapaksa did on Monday. The ruling party, Sri Lankan Podujina Perumuna, also welcomed the move. The main opposition party, United National Party, criticized it, calling it government's incompetence that has been exposed. <laughs> मैं आंधु तब तब इकम मास है एक बात इस तरह तो यार ना कहें मतलब नहीं मगर मैं पालने कर पु मास तूने का काल सीमा वो तूल आंधु ये निरुवत बरपातल विधि है तो हेल्लूम क्या वाद इधर हुआ The new parliament will meet on May 14th, the election commission said in a statement. Indian archaeologists have unearthed over 4,000 year old urban site in the country's northern Varanasi city which they claim are from an ancient Indian empire that existed in golden age of India. The items found so far from the site include potteries, brick walls and flooring. Archaeologists of Banaras Hindu University in northern India unearthed an urban settlement in Bhabaniya village of Varanasi city recently that they expect dates back to 2000 BCE. According to an archaeology professor, so far, the items found in the excavations include a furnace, some well-defined structures, brick walls and flooring from Gupta period. Some temples and potteries have also been found, which the archaeologists say are 4,000 years old and some brick walls which are about 2,000 years old. The Gupta Empire was an ancient Indian empire existing from the mid to late 3rd century common era to 543 common era. This period is considered as the golden age of India by some historians. The excavation site Bhabaniya village is scarcely populated, but now experts believe that it could be the center of neighboring ancient spiritual capital of India, Varanasi. Devotees from across India thronged to northern Barsana town on Tuesday to trench each other in colors as they celebrated Ladumar Holi, marking the arrival of Holi, the festival of colors. On Ladumar Holi, people hurled round sweets called Laddu at each other, apart from playing with colors. Hindu devotees thronged to Barsana town in India's northern Holi Mathura city and were trenched in colors as they celebrated Ladumar Holi on Tuesday, marking the arrival of Holi, the festival of colors. On the occasion of Laddu Mar Holi, people hurl Laddu all round sweets at each other, apart from smearing each other with colours. Although Holi is played across the country, bridge region, which includes Mathura, Vrindavan, Barsana, Gokul and Govardhan cities, celebrates the festival for over a month. It is believed that Hindu Lord Krishna and his friends had accepted the invitation to play Holi with the residents of Barsana on this day. आज लड्डू होली और यहाँ का आनंद बिल्कुल अलग है सारी दुनिया में कई जगह पे फेस्टिवल होते हैं लेकिन यहाँ पर जो अपनापन मिलता है वो कहीं नहीं होली सेलिब्रेशन इन मथुरा इस पॉपुलर वर्ल्ड वाइड फॉर इट्स स्पिरिट एंड फेवर इट इस द मोस्ट अवेटेड फेस्टिवल ऑफ द रीजन वेर सेलिब्रेशन बिगिन डेज well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.